Afternoon, Mike. I miss that kiss so much. <laughs> I miss it too. We must get together for some seriously... Uh, well, you may have to do some practising for this Hunter Biden uh, uh, role that you're taking on because there's some pretty uh, X-rated stuff in his life, isn't there? There is some extremely X-rated stuff in uh, his life and it's uh, it's it, it's a very surreal comedy. And, but the problem is it's a surreal comedy because it's all true. Yes. So, and, um, and, and one of the reasons that you're doing this, Lawrence, coming out of retirement, I, if, I, if I may say that, um, is because it is such a fascinating story and, and it's hardly ever really been told, has it? Well, it absolutely wasn't told. It was the, the New York Post uh, uh, tweet about the story uh, to do with the laptop was banned by Twitter for spreading political misinformation and then when they polled a set of democrat voters if they knew the biden story they said they wouldn't have voted for him right. so essentially twitter did play their role in um, affecting the american elections yes absolutely right so what's the plan then are you going to be taking yourself away from the public gaze for a few weeks or what's, what's happening well i've got this one daubney to um to uh, to hold the fort excellent for, um, excellent plan for, for three for three three or four weeks when i'm gone but i'll, I'll just be doing two jobs at the same time right uh, so i'll be i'll be even more busy than i am currently and tell us a bit about the guys making the film because they've got a bit of a track record of doing things slightly off to the side haven't they yeah Phelim and Anne, they are um they're, they're brilliant you know they're they're, they're just proper storytellers mm. they're interested in that sort of thing and you know hollywood's never going to make a story like this and hollywood's just become one long woke lecture so it's um it's you know it's it's a proper film. It's interesting. I mean, I, I I've watched a few bits on TV, and uh, I I haven't missed acting, if I'm honest. No. For a while. Do All you? Th I mean, do you acting. think that if you were to go back into where you were before in terms of the people that you would have worked with, that you would be sort of shunned by them? Well, it depends how close to the camera you get. You see, because if you walk past the Sparks and the Chippies on the edge of set, they're all high fiving you and going, yeah. "Good on, mate." <laughs> But by the time you get up to the actors, they're all sat there go, um, having little conversations about their white privilege and stuff. I mean, I had a, I had a conversation with somebody on Twitter last night who accused me of uh, being a typical white. This is a white guy, by the way, typical white man, uh, assuming that he knows about stuff because he's white. And I was actually talking about Belfast, where I've been, which I do know quite a lot about. And I was kind of going, what is wrong with you people? Why, why do you think that being a white man is somehow a problem? Well, it's just, it's it's a very very sad reflection of what a society, a very sort of um, arrogant, affluent society, is doing to itself. You know, these people have decided we've reached the end of history, and we're just going to judge everyone with white skin. And actually, th there is racism in this world, across this world, and we shouldn't under uh, we shouldn't you know we should we should pay proper huge attention to it. Yeah. But I tell you what, there is a lot of anti-white racism. Yeah. And I'm getting I'm I'm. I find it rather upsetting, actually. I think it's really bad, certainly for my kids yeah. who uh, who talk, who come home talking about things like white privilege yes. taught in schools. Well, I mean, I think it's absolutely criminal to give any child the view that they are somehow different from anybody else. I mean, anybody who says that as a teacher is incorrect and wrong and, in my view, should be out of a job. Absolutely. It's, and it divides us. And we're, we're a wonderful nation. You yeah. know, time after time after time, we're proved to be the most warm, welcoming and tolerant nation. And all these guys want to do, the anti-racist movement, the BLM lot, they're just a bunch of racists. They're mm. exactly the thing they accuse you of. Yeah. It's a nightmare. Yeah. But, but, you know, I think people are people are getting a bit fed up with it. People want to be, the British are very tolerant and we and warm. But, we, we you know, we don't want our whole culture and society undermined by a bunch of people who've been to the indoctrination factories of universities and school and told that their country's the worst thing that ever happened on earth. Yeah. We've done some great things. And my grandfather took shrapnel in, in the neck so that these people can moan about how the UK is. Absolutely. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, talking about schools and children, I know you've been vociferous about uh, vaccinations for children. Um, I was saying earlier this week that a lot of the schools I, I'm talking about look as if they're a bit frightened of this whole business. I mean, I'm not having my kids being vaccinated. They're not going. It's not going to happen for them. I know that you're, you're feeling that way as well. Have you heard from your kids' school? I've written to my, my well, it only affects my eldest son at the moment. So I've written to his school, and and they've been very helpful. They they don't seem particularly inspired by this idea. No. And you know, and I think they feel pretty wary. And and um, you know, it, it people. There's this horrible conflation between anti-vax and pro-choice. And in my and certainly, and I'm my position is I want to be pro-choice, but I also want to. Be, I'm pro-family. 
So the state should not have its dirty little fingers in the family unit. That's right. the most sacred thing within society. And we have to protect that because you break the family and you change everything. And yeah. we need, we, we're we going to fight for it. But, you know, at the same time, if a child, if a parent wants their kid vaccinated and the kid wants to get vaccinated, I wholeheartedly support them to do it. But people do this horrible thing. Oh, you're an anti-vaxxer. I'm not. I'm just a, what's the Russia? Yeah. Well, exactly right. And I think the fact is, because there are some lawsuits uh, pending and knocking about, I think the schools are going to be quite nervous anyway of getting involved in it. And my, 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 certainly the letter I got doesn't bear any resemblance to what we were told would be the case from the government, because they don't say, for example, uh, your child may wish to take uh, the vaccine without your consent. They don't, there's no mention of consent other than from the parents. Well, also the Gillick competence uh, I test is absolutely ridiculous mm. because it's a false equivalence. The, the the contraceptive pill, which it was used for the first time round, has had decades of data behind it. Yeah. And you cannot forgive or blame a parent for going, I just want to wait and see. These kids are at minuscule uh, danger from this virus, along with pretty much everybody else other than the elderly. Yeah. And, um, we, you know, any parent who wants to say, look, I just want to be cautious. Should that should come ahead of everything else? The government should have absolutely no right to impinge on the sac sacred family unit. No, at exactly. All. And it's as you look around the the, the world as well, not just uh, in Australia where things seem to have gone completely off the scale, crazy. Um, but even here, where there's a big row going on about Strictly, uh, where they're saying, well, maybe everybody should be vaccinated if they're going to be on this show. Well, why? And 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 you know, where does that all stop? Well, also, it's it's like, what, when did your personal private medical records suddenly become anyone else's business mm. in this country? It's like voting. It's private. I said the other day to when one of these, um, you know, uh, from the blue tick brigade started going on about sacking them all. I said, well, you know, how would you feel about an HIV infected doctor? Yeah. If they had to. And they deliberately spin it around. They go, oh, no, you don't understand. HIV is not passed that way. And I was saying, that's not the point. Yes. The point here is your private medical information is your private medical information. We're not organs of the state. We're individuals. And we and, and our public servants are public servants. They're not our rulers. And we've got to remember this because our society is regressing drastically at that simple change of uh, relationship yeah. between the subject and the state. It's dreadful. Well, also, there's no actual evidence at all to suggest that by dancing with someone that you will pass COVID to them anyway. I mean, the only sure thing about COVID is that where you, where you know you're going to get it is if you go into a hospital. But apart from yeah. going to the hospital to get it, I mean, there are people that live together. One person's had it, the other person hasn't. There's all sorts of situations where you've been with people who had COVID and you didn't get it. I mean, I've never had it. I don't know whether you have. Um, I've, but I've been, I've been, I've been working all the way through. I've been on tube trains. I've been at parties. I've been embracing you. You know, I mean, lots yeah. of things could have passed me COVID, but I didn't get it. Yeah, you, I don't know what else you might have got from me, though, Mike. At the end of the day, um, <laughs> I've my... already had everything. Don't worry. <laughs> My kids both had COVID last week and um, were and sitting there, you know, with their sort of very mild symptoms. Yeah. And I was um, cuddling and kissing them. I've been on these marches. I've shaken thousands of hands, given people loads of hugs. Either I've had it or um, I'm the world's jammiest man. Mm. Well, that's the thing. I mean, we all know people that have had it and none of us who are accused of being COVID deniers have actually denied its existence. I mean, that's a complete and utter myth. And the fact is that, you know, when you see people being told they must get a vaccine in order to go to work, I've been hearing it from friends of mine in America, certainly happening in Australia. I think it's happening in, in France as well. Vaccine passports in Scotland. I was just speaking to Donald McLeod up there, who's who's launched a legal challenge. You know, these are dangerous times, I think. They're incredibly dangerous times. And I think I've, I've been saying it to people for a long time. If they thought lockdowns were an imposition on your uh, civil liberties, wait till the vaccine passports kick in, mm. which they, you know, America, Biden has, has said he's going to uh, forcibly vaccinate 100 million Americans or 80 million Americans in companies with 100 employees or not. It's just very arbitrary. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we this, this is getting endemic now it's becoming endemic we shouldn't be becoming more and more draconian and it it gives um fuel to conspiracy theorists who weirdly are not conspiracy theorists because every single conspiracy theory they've come up with has so far been proved right mm. that, this, that this has something more behind it and you've got boris now going oh, i can't squeeze enough out of 
COVID anymore, so I'll nip up to Scotland, crack a joke about Kermit the Frog, and impoverish the entire nation just so he can look good. I know. He's meant to be a conservative. What happened to this party? Well, I mean, I don't know who wrote that speech for him, but the idea that he goes into the United Nations and starts slagging off the Muppets. I mean, you know, everybody loves the Muppets. You can't say Kermit was wrong. Kermit was never wrong. Muppetist. Absolutely. That's what it is. It's shocking. Shocking. By the way, who are you going to get to play Joe Biden in this movie? Oh, there's, I'm not allowed to say at the moment. There's a few. There's a, there's a few conversations taking place. All oh, right. Okay. They, just, they just wanted to get me out of the way first. Somebody and, hasn't got um, a very good memory, I would suggest. <laughs> it's quite. I mean, whoa, it's it's going to be interesting. It's yeah, absolutely. Pretty, it, I have to say, it pulls no punches. This no. script. Now, since you've uh, but since you've last been on this show, which was back in I think July of last year when we opened the the, the pubs uh, together, um, the Reclaim Party has been formed. It's it's been quite successful in the terms that that you set it out to do. I guess to run in various different places. Where's it going to go in the next twelve months? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're putting together our little target list. We've been driving around for the last, you know, nine months, and we're, we're putting our target list of where uh, where the Tories are very vulnerable to the promises that they made to to voters who lent their vote to them. Right. And um, we, we, we're going to find places where there are proper issues. You obviously, you've got a huge problem in the fishing industry. You've got a lot of problems in freedom of speech in Batley. You've got energy problems in Durham. You've got, uh, you, you know, you, you, the country's in, in a right old state. Mm. And th- this idea that suddenly we're going to, we're going to charge, it's going to cost 50 grand to, put these heat exchanges in and stuff mm. in just your average house you know and, and who's that going to impoverish the poorest who are already being absolutely done over by yeah. these lockdowns yeah, and these restrictions it's going to be a winter of discontent unless we all we've got to remind ourselves that this is a wonderful country and that we're strong and we're optimistic and we've got hope yeah that's what we need to do not not sit there and constantly be self-flagellating it's the disease of 2020 yeah i mean i really think that what we need to do is have a movement of people which includes political parties like yours but doesn't have to be exclusively yours and there's a together campaign for this as well where we basically tell the politicians hang on guys you know we elected you we pay you you don't pay us so therefore you do what we want we don't do what you want yeah exactly i mean it's that great i was watching um uh, Braveheart with the kids the other night trying to unindoctrinate them from the woke stuff <laughs> and and he says uh, you exist you, you think we exist to, the people exist to provide you with position and we I think that you exist to provide the people of this country with freedom and I go to see they have it and that's how we should be in this country yeah I think absolutely right so what's the plan for the next few days Lawrence what are you up to uh, we, we, we're going to try to do a, a show that doesn't get cancelled off YouTube today. Okay. Um, for spreading missing medi- we were we were taken off for spreading medical misinformation for agreeing with the JVCI. <laughs> uh, so um, that's the, that goes against YouTube guidelines. We're um, preparing for our own little um, counter conference oh, coming yes. up. And um, yeah, we, we we're just going to rock the boat, remind people that we're here, and um, wait for wait for the next stupid move from this government, so that we can go. And we're preparing something for COP twenty six as well. Oh, good, because that's that, that's the most undemocratic thing in the whole world. You can't get a load of countries together to come up with an idea and not put it to the electorate, right. and then just say, oh, by the way, voting Conservative just cost you fifty grand, mate. But also, it's not even an idea. All it is is getting a load of people in a room to agree to say that they're going to do something. I was saying earlier on uh, to. John John Rental, it's a bit like somebody uh, coming up to you, uh, or with your wife, or maybe your ex-wife, saying, you know, um, are you, do you promise not to uh, go out with any other women ever again? And you go, yeah, of course, absolutely no problem at all. Great, fine, sign here, off you go, go and enjoy yourself. It means nothing. You know, oh yeah, we're going to be carbon neutral by 2035. So what? <laughs> yeah, also, why don't you go over to Xi Jinping and say to him, can you stop building one power coal-fired power station a week? and then using all that coal-fired energy to build the solar panels that we can virtuously put on our roofs. It's unbelievable <laughs> yes, levels of which, woke Which actually on. can't be recycled, apparently, either, except unless you're willing to spend a fortune uh, once they've run out of whatever it is that they use uh, to bring the electricity into your house. And also, that £50,000 you're talking about, a lot of people haven't even got the space, because if you want to put one of these ground heaters in, you need to have a huge space in a garage, like the, to put two sort of super fridges in. You need to put something in the garden... Now, what about if you live, as I do in London, in a one-bedroom flat, doesn't have a garden, doesn't have a garage? You're going to be very cold, Mike. I, well, awesome. I'm always warm. It's not a problem for me. <laughs> you are. I don't, I don't need much heating at home, to be honest. I, I have all, my... of this, 
all of this ideologically driven stuff, which we've got into in the last year, the zero policies of zero COVID, zero carbon, all of this sort of stuff, it's all ideology. And what it does is it, 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 it almost always has the exact opposite effect of what they intend to do. They're going to make the poor people poor. Same with vaccine passports. Who, you know, the, the, you look at the ethnic breakdown of people who've taken this the vaccine and vaccine passports are discriminatory and racist in the same way as these um, little green zealot um, doomsday cultists who lobby the government for saying the world is not to them. They're gonna, just going to impoverish poor people. Yeah. It was done by that guy from um, Insulate Britain who's sitting there going, why don't you insulate your own house first, mate? Yes, exactly. Or preferably insulate yourself in the loft with insulating tape. And don't come back yeah. out again. Listen, Lawrence, good to see you. There's a guy revving his, uh, his uh, engine there next to you, obviously not in, not buying into the green agenda at all. Um, listen, we'll have to get you in to do Plank of the Week at some point soon. And tell Daubney uh, to do some work as well while you're at it instead of just driving you around. It's a shocking state of affairs. Uh, this is, of course, uh, the Independent Republican Mike Graham. That was Lawrence Fox. He's a man that talks a lot of common sense.